This is an adventure story. It's about two boys, Pete and Tim Stanton, and about some things they learn one summer. But it's also about what they have to go through to learn those things. It seems some people are able to learn things the easy way, and some others have to learn the hard way. Now you may be like Pete or Tim, or like one of their friends, or you may not be. But the important thing is to put yourself in their shoes and see what you can learn from their mistakes. It could save you from some dangerous adventures of your own. This is episode one. If Tim can get Pete away from his TV movie, they'll be ready to go fishing. Sounds like fun, but what they're about to learn is that disobedience can get them into serious trouble. And serious trouble is a good time to learn to cry out to God for help. Let's see what happens as the adventure begins in Storm. Summer was finally here again. Three whole months of no homework, no tests, and plenty of time for fishing and goofing off. I could hardly wait. I remember back when we were little kids, Dad used to take me and my brother Pete out fishing all the time. We'd spend hours in our favorite spot by the number nine buoy. Man, it was great. We'd fish and pretend we were secret agents or something. Even Dad used to get into it. But then, after he died, well, it just didn't seem the same. Oh, we still had fun and all, but nothing really exciting ever happened. I knew Mom really tried hard, but, well, maybe this summer would be different. Anyway, Pete and I had decided to go fishing this afternoon again, but when the time came, Pete wasn't around. I looked at my watch, 2.30. <laughs> I knew exactly where he was. I know, Sheila, but I've got to find out what's going on in there. I'm sick and tired of all this tiptoeing around just to keep the good doctor from having one of his fits. There's something very unhealthy going on around here, and I intend to get to the bottom of it right now. Look at this place. What's he doing in here? Looks like he's working on some kind of machine. I've never seen so many wires. Come on, let's have a look. There's a control panel over here. John, please, I don't like the looks of this. Let's just get out of here. No, Sheila, not until I find out what all this is. Three people have disappeared already, and I think the doctor's been lying to us. There's got to be a way into this contraption. Here. Oh, hurry up, please. Just wait. We can't go to the police without some kind of evidence. I'll just be a minute. If anything happens, get out of here and bring help, okay? Oh, I suppose. Just hurry. No! John, get out of there! John? John, are you okay? John? Hey, what's the big idea? It was just getting to the good part. 
Pete, my dear brother, it's almost 2.30, and you said you wanted to go fishing. You can watch TV later. Let's go. Yeah, but it was right in the middle of my movie. Don't worry. I've seen that one before, and it's pretty dumb. Now, you gonna fish or what? You're kidding me, right? I'm supposed to be happy with that ending? Oh, come on, Pete. I'll tell you how it ends while we're fishing. How about that? Just let me see the end, Tim. Please. You go get the tackle box and stuff, and I'll be out in a minute. You know I can't get it by myself, Pete. It's up on the shelf in the garage, and I need you to hold the flashlight while I move some of the other stuff. Oh, brother. Okay, but you better remember to tell me how it ended. We'd better get out of here quick, Pete. Mom's gonna be back from the store any minute, and she won't let us go out if it gets too late. Okay, okay, come on. Hey, I think it's up there somewhere. Can you reach it? Yeah, I think so. Man, can't believe Mom buried our tackle box way up here on this shelf. And she knew we'd be using it all summer. But you know how Mom is. When she starts cleaning the garage, she doesn't care what it is. She wants it up on the shelf and out of the way. Man, there's so much. Hey, there it is. Are you sure that one's it? Sure, I'm sure. I think I know what our tackle box looks like. Hey, hey, we haven't fished since last summer. You forget a lot of important stuff when you're in school, you know. Come on, Tim, get that thing down here. I could be watching my movie. Okay, Pete, quit clowning around. I still gotta move some of this stuff to get to it. All right, I've got it. Oops, oh no, look out! Hey! Pete! Pete, are you all right? Pete? Oh, man. That box hit him right on the head. Hey, Pete, wake up. Listen, this is Tim. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, Tim? Tim? Oh, man. Tim, who? My head. Uh, Tim, who? Tim, your brother. Uh, uh, hey, hey, are you okay? Uh, Tim? Man. Uh, yeah, Tim, Tim, Tim. The only Tim I know went through Dr. Inferno's machine and... Oh, no. Get away from me! Get back! Oh, no! Oh, my arm down! Come down, down, Pete! What are you talking about? You've been hit on that head, but but I'm sure everything's gonna be okay, okay? Now, now, now just come on inside, and we'll call a doctor. Uh, no, no, it's okay now. For a minute there, I thought you were... Hey, are you sure you're Tim? How, how can you prove it? Hey, get away! Keep back! Get away from hey, me! Well, get away! Prove I'm Tim! Come on, man, what, oh, what's the matter with you? <laughs> Boy, I really had you going. What do you mean? Y you were just faking? <laughs> I'm Dr. Inferno. Won't you step into my machine? Okay, very funny. Sometimes I think those dumb movies get to your brain. Ah, come on. Now, don't be mad. You can't help it if you're gullible. Gullible? Hey, what if you'd really been hurt? Well, I wasn't, and besides, you were asking for it after turning off my movie. Oh, okay, so we're even. Now let's go. Here, you take the tackle box and I'll carry the poles. Hey, I'm gonna take the binoculars, too. Never know what kind of secret agent we might stumble across. Oh, brother, here we go again. number nine. I know, I want to try a new spot. But we're almost out of the bay. Skip told me about a great place out by the reef over there, just over from the lighthouse. But Mom told us not to go outside the bay. Come on, we've never been outside the bay in all the times we fished out here. I'm sure she wouldn't mind, just this once. Anyhow, she'll never know, right? Well, I don't, I don't know about this, Pete. Skip said they caught 28 flounders out here in three hours one time. We never caught that many fish by number nine in a whole weekend. Well, uh, all, all right, okay. I, I guess it would be kind of neat just to see what's out there anyway. Oh, you won't be sorry, Tim, really. You won't. I hope Pete was right. It was true. We had never been outside the bay. Only the guys with bigger boats went out there because it could get pretty rough. This might be kind of exciting, though. Going someplace we'd never been before? 
Well, it, it'd be like a real adventure this time. Deep down inside, though, I had that awful feeling. We were headed for trouble. Just around this bend here, Tim, and I think we'll be there. Man, this is gonna be great. I sure hope we catch something. Oh, we will, we will. Okay, that's it, right over there. Hey, wait a minute. Looks like somebody else knows about this spot, too. Look. Who's that guy, Pete? I don't know. I've never seen him here before. I wonder if he's catching anything. You think he'd mind if we fished out here, too? I don't know why he would. Uh, hi. You catching anything? What's it to you? Pardon me? I said, what's it to you? What do you boys want? Well, sir, we were told that there were some great fishing out here, so we thought we'd come out and try. Oh, you did, huh? <laughs> well, I'm fishing here now, so you better find yourselves another spot. Oh, okay, well, uh, that's fine. Uh, sure, uh, we, uh, uh, we're sorry we disturbed you. Yeah, you disturbed me all right, and the fish too. Probably scared them all off. Now I'll never catch anything. Hey, we're really sorry about this, mister. We'll go find somewhere else, okay? You do that. I suggest you don't come back here again today. Man, what's with him? What a grouch. Really? He must not have been catching anything. Head on over towards Cove Point. Maybe we can find another place. Well, that's the end of side one. Our story continues on side two. There was something strange about that, Pete. I know, he acted like he owned that spot or something. No, no, I, I mean, he wasn't really fishing. He didn't even have a fishing pole out. You're right, I did see a tackle box, though. Maybe his pole was down on the deck or something where I couldn't see it. I wonder what that guy's up to. I don't know, but whatever it is, I don't think he wants us to know about it. That's for sure. Well, why don't we just anchor around here somewhere and see if we can catch something? Sounds good to me. We'll need to start back soon anyway. Hey, all right. Let's get that fishing stuff out. Oh, okay. What time is it? Uh, I'd say it's about half past a freckle. What? I'm looking at my wrist and all I can see is a freckle. You don't have your watch? Hey, no, I, I thought you had yours. Tim, I don't have my watch either. How are we gonna know when the tide changes if we don't have a watch? Uh, we should be able to tell, don't you think? I, I mean, if we watch the current and all. Yeah, well, we better be able to tell. Hey, open up that cooler and hand me a Coke, will you? Boy, this is the life. You know, it'd be even better if we were making some decent money, though. Mowing lawns during the summer just doesn't pay enough. You mean easy money. The kind you can make without working so hard for it. I mean, uh... Oh, face it, Pete. You just don't like hard work. You want to make money, but you don't want to work for it. Well... <laughs> Sorry to break this to you, but money doesn't just fall out of the sky. You've got to work for it. Hey, you never can tell. Now what, another boat? Tim, look at that. Wow, I've never seen a design like that on a boat. I know, it looks like a hawk or something. Man, I wonder if we could paint something like that on the side of our boat. Ooh, man, that'd be wild. That is fine looking, you know what? I wonder who that guy is. Hey, hey, wait a minute, look. He said it's straight from Mr. Grouch. Oh, brother, I wonder if he'll be run off like we were. Can you see him? Well, sort of. Here, hand me the binoculars. What's going on? It looks like they're just talking. Uh, now Mr. Grouch is, ha is handing that other guy his tackle box. His tackle box? Yeah, and now they're shaking hands. The Grouch is starting the motor. A and he's leaving? 
Yeah, they, they're going different directions. The guy in the Hawk boat is headed back toward Clinton. It looks like Mr. Grouch is going on down the coast. Man, this is weird. How about this for excitement, huh? Some way to start off the summer. Yeah, really. I, I sure wish I knew what all that was about. You think we ought to tell the police or something? What are we gonna tell them, huh? Two guys meet and one of them gives the other his tackle box? Big deal. We'd be laughed out of the town. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, now they're gone. Do you want to go back over to Skip's spot? Good idea. Hey, pull up the anchor, Tim, and I'll start the motor. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. What? Listen, Pete. Is it thunder? Yeah, I think we better just get home and forget the fishing for today. I don't want to get caught in this storm way out here. What's the matter? Man, I, I don't know. It won't start. Come on, motor. Hey, well, here, let me try. Tim, I think we're drifting further out. We were anchored closer to the reef. And just look how far the lighthouse looks now. Yeah, I think you're right. That means the tide is already going out. Man, it must be later than we thought. We've got to get this motor going, Pete. No kidding. Here, let me have another try. How can it suddenly not be working? It was fine when we came out. How should I know? I'm not a mechanic. Well, what are we going to do? Start paddling. I'll keep trying the motor. The current's too strong for me, Pete. We're getting further away. Man, why did I let you drag me out here? I knew something would happen. I knew it. Hey, it's not all my fault. If you would have brought your watch, we wouldn't be in this situation right now anyway. All right, go ahead and blame it on me, Mr. Perfect. You're never to blame. Oh, get off it, Tim. We're never going to get anywhere if we keep fighting. And Mom said this kind of thing had happened before. People getting caught in a storm and not being able to get back in time. Man, she's probably worried about us by now. She thought we were in the bay. Rain. Here it is, Pete. We're in for it now. Oh, keep your shirt on. We'll figure something out. Like what? We've already tried everything. Like I don't know, okay? But something will work out. I hope. Throw the anchor back in. At least it'll hold us here. Man, this is serious. I'm really getting scared. Me too, but we've got to do something. Hey, hey, Pete, do you know how Mom is always talking about, you know, how God is in control and everything? Yeah, but that's church. This is real. Well, Pete, if God is God, then he's everywhere, not just in church. If there is a God, then he's got to be here. He just got to be. God, if you can hear me, if you're really there, God, please help us. We disobeyed Mom, and we're really sorry. Yeah. If you really do help people, God, please help us now. We don't know what to do anymore. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Pete, try the motor again. What? I, I said try the motor again. Remember the time you and Skip and I had trouble by the pier? When the fuel line was pinched? It acted just like this, remember? But I can't even see down here. Just feel the holes down by the tank. That's it, Tim. That's the problem. It must have been pinched when I pushed the tank back to get the tackle box. All right! Woo! Yeah! yeah. Oh, I knew God man. would help us. I'll get the anchor up. Just steer toward the lighthouse. I'll start bailing. There's a lot of water in here. I can't even see a thing. Neither can I. It sure got dark in a hurry. Hey, be careful. There's a lot of rocks around the reef. Oh, if we could just make it to shore, please, God, the water is so rough. Just steer toward that lighthouse. Watch that rock ahead. I see it. I can't steer clear of it. You've got to. The boat's out of control. Hold on. Look out. The next thing I knew, I was in the water, swimming toward the lighthouse with all the strength I had. Pete had disappeared, and the boat was nowhere in sight. 
Waves were crashing around my face, and I was swallowing lots of water. My senses began to fade, and as I lost all hope, I remember thinking, God, we ask you to help us. Just then, my feet touched sand, and then everything was black. And that was just the beginning.